Hello, uh, I've got an update to deliver on the um, on my Enigma machine project. Um, but first, I'd like to cover something that I mentioned in a previous video um, relating to how the design is parametric. Um, so you can see here, um, I've got a couple parts that are just positioned together and I've cut them in half so I can have a look inside and check the tolerances and make sure there's nothing overlapping and make sure there's no conflicts or anything. Um, on the right hand side of the screen I've got some code here. Uh, this is OpenSCAD code and it defines the geometry. Um, now in OpenSCAD you define geometry with um, uh, primitive shapes like uh, we've got some cubes, some cylinders, spheres and you can sort of make a cone with a weird cylinder and um, you combine those together with the various logical operations um, like translate which just moves it or rotate or scale and you just mash a heap of different shapes together and apply different logical operations to them and that gives you your final design. Um, so the design uh, incorporates a heap of variables. Um, so where possible, I've uh, made everything in the design to relate back to as few key variables as possible, um, such that these variables can be adjusted and um, the rest of the the rest of the variables follow suit. So that means that you can you can do pretty cool stuff. Say, for example, the screws that I bought. Um, they just happen to be on the shelf and cheap. Uh, had a, a 5.7 millimeter uh, radius on the head. That's the top bulby bit. So if I, for example, couldn't find 5.8 millimeter radius, I could um, buy some 4 millimeter radius. So I could just go into my design here and change this 5.7 here to 4, and save, and the design rebuilds. So you notice that the the radius of the overall rotors changed. The spacing changed, everything inherited from that key variable, and as you can see, there's no there's no conflicts that resolve uh, that result as a, that come about as a result of this. Um, if you've written the code properly, that is, it doesn't do it automatically, but if you if you do it right, um, it's relatively easy to do stuff like that. That just makes OpenSCAD code really really useful for making generalizable uh, geometry. You can I can ship this to someone somewhere else and they'll be able to just modify it slightly with adjusting a few key variables and um, you know, adapt it to their specific circumstance. So let me just revert that change. Um, as another example, um, say you wanted to make an Enigma machine, Enigma machine that worked in some weird alphabet that, for example, instead of having 26 characters, uh, had, say, 30. Just change that and hey presto, all of a sudden you've now got 30 screws and you see the diameter increased slightly because there's a, it has to maintain this required separation here and um, everything else follows suit. So it's it's incredibly powerful. I'll change that back before I forget. Um, yeah, that's just one of the reasons I love OpenSCAD so much because it's if you do it right, you can make it really, really versatile. Um, so I've assembled a couple of the rotors. Here you can see uh, one half a rotor um, and lots of these black and red cables. Um, I, I actually, I was originally intending to um, put the wire through the hole and then put the screw in to get the electrical connection between the wire and the screw, but uh, a colleague of mine, Harry, mentioned that, um, well, just asked, he assumed that I'd just be soldering to the screws, and I thought, at the time, oh, don't be silly, it's steel, you can't solder to steel. But they're galvanized screws and coated with zinc, so solder sticks to them. So with the aid of a bit of flux, I managed to solder directly to the screw, which saved a whole heap of unscrewing and rescrewing. Um, unfortunately, this cable that I picked up first, um, the insulation on it is way too thick, um, and I couldn't actually get the second half of the rotor on. So I switched over to using some very small mod wire. It's actually uh, wire wrapping wire and um, painstakingly soldered all those on and I looked up uh, a table for the, the Wehrmacht rotor. Actually, that that's a rotor 1 type and they're common between the, the um, land forces and the naval Enigma. Um, but I soldered them all together and after a bit of finagling managed to get screws into it without crushing the cables. So now I've, I've got one authentic rotor and then I went through with the multimeter and beeped out to make sure that you know you connected to whatever you connects to. Um, but that's as far as I've got. I've only soldered up one of the rotors. Um, now I'll transition to reality and show you the rest of it. So 
so here we are in reality. Um, I've assembled it to um, some board um, and so on the right hand side here you can see that part that we were looking at in OpenSCAD earlier and the, uh, the sleeve that goes inside it. Uh, not shown in the OpenSCAD were four printable springs that go inside here that uh, provide a bit of squished in to squish the whole thing together to get good conduction. Um, there's a very similar piece over here, but obviously this side's got the bumps and this side's got the pits, I think, um, from memory. Um, so I've got all the rotors here. I think that one is the one that I've actually got the wiring inside. Um, so my main concern and the main reason I assembled this was to test that, uh, to test that the rotation would work as I had hoped. Um, so if I just get a screw over here, I can uh, push down on that and you see the number of rotors move at once uh, which is obviously not desired behaviour so I'm going to have to uh, look at um, adjusting the amount of squish that gets applied such that it doesn't rotate more than one at a time and it um, gets good conduction so there's a bit of a trade-off there um, but that's just a matter of varying the strength of these springs I'm actually looking at building sort of a slide arrangement very, oh, it's actually on this side, a slide arrangement very similar to the original Enigma which had a little lever here that you could pull and that would retract this part in here that would allow the removal of the entire rotor assembly um, and that would allow me to adjust the tension on the fly. I'm also anticipating that um, this will wear in pretty quickly and um, I'll be able to make it such that only one turns at a time. But very much a factor of um, how much force is on the end of it. Okay. Bye-bye.